I'm here tonight with um, Allie um, Silly. Yeah. Um, go ahead. <laughs> oh, no, I'm just saying hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you also always uh, lived in Nashville? Oh, no. I'm from Northern California originally, and then I moved to Nashville about two years ago. Um, you, Where are you living, Rich? Um, I live in Waynesboro, Virginia. It's okay, Virginia. <laughs> you're kind of, all right. So you're kind of used to these these little surrounding areas. <laughs> um, you used to perform um your songs with your um, grandfather. You as a caretaker. And, yeah. Um, what can you tell people about that? Um. um well. I feel like I used to just set up and kind of just play all my songs to grandpa um, and see if he liked them and what he thought and that kind of thing. And um, it was like a, I mean, pretty much every day, all the time I was playing all the time and he, people would come over and he'd be like, she just does this all the time. <laughs> That's all I would do. And uh, it just was a near and dear time in my life. Like probably one of the biggest catapulting moments because I always say, you know, like your darkest night, sometimes it'll bring the brightest morning. And that's kind of what happened with my grandfather and I, because we were so close and for so long, we spent so much time together. So when he passed away, I kind of felt like a part, you know, my, a big purpose in my life was missing. And, um, I was really lucky that, um, I had music because I really felt like there was nothing else in my life at that time. And so music kind of saved me in a lot of ways. And I just turned to the music, and I, I remember some, one of my friends told me when I was really grieving, um, he said, well, what's the thing that you think of that makes you want to wake up in the morning? And I just paused, and I was like, music. You know, that's the only thing I could think of is writing songs and playing songs. And he's like, then I think you should do that. And it was like a big changing moment in my life, because I have never had the guts before, but... You know, when you, I guess when you don't have much to lose, then that's a really good time to go after it. <laughs> and um, Leonard Skinner was a big influence on you? Yeah, I, so I played softball my whole life, and my dad and I would be driving in the truck, and we'd be listening to the tape of Leonard Skinner. So, <laughs> you know, like Call Me the Breeze and all this stuff, we'd be like jamming out. So that was like a big, uh, big band for me. I knew all their songs. And I did that cover, All I Can Do Is Write It in a Song, a while back. And they ended up sharing it. And I pretty much freaked out. I thought, man, if nothing cool ever happens again in my life, like that was the coolest thing that could have ever happened. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it was pretty, it was a pretty good moment. But it also gave me the confidence to like pursue music more because I kind of felt like I needed permission or something, you know. Okay. So. We're going to play your song, um, Fighter. Okay. <laughs>
Okay. Um, oh. What inspired you to write um, two albums in Nashville? And mm-hmm. do we see a EP or a, another album in um, 2020? So I, I just write about my life, and I just write authentically. I don't, you know, um, I've been writing a lot more lately, but I'm still releasing songs off the second album this year, so I'll just be releasing the rest of the songs because um, I released for the first half of the songs as kind of an EP, and so now I'm just releasing as singles for the rest of the year as I'm um, also doing a lot of co-writing in town and hanging out trying to um, kind of – focus on new projects and and things like that so it's been it's been really fun actually but like I said the first two albums they've really been like a window into my soul I've just tried to kind of write things that I've lived through in different ways and sometimes they're kind of metaphoric but there was always kind of a catapulting moment that kind of inspired the song and there's a lot of stories I could tell just based on writing the songs you know so okay. yeah um that would be the Next question, um, who would you like to co-write with in the future? <laughs> oh, man, there's so many. There, I have a long list of co-writes that I want to write with right now. First of all, a big shout-out to my friend Greg Bria because he's so talented, and I've been really fortunate to be writing with him lately. Um, but also, I have a dream of writing with a guy named James House. He, I saw him play at the Bluebird, but he's an amazing blues player. He writes beautifully. He's so talented. Like, I've been kind of like, okay, and I have Sarah Buxton as a dream co-write because she writes so many amazing songs, and I sing a lot of her songs. And then my third, because I'm only going to keep it short. I'm not going to keep going on this co-writer. But I would say my third is Chuck Cannon because he wrote this song um, called Pick Your Poison for – George Strait, and um, when I heard it, it was like one of the songs that I wish that I wrote. wrote. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Uh, where can people go and um, see your music videos and uh, events? Music videos and events? Yes. <laughs> okay, so music videos are on YouTube, and I kind of go live all over. So, I mean, you guys can hang out with me anytime, pretty much everywhere, because I feel like I just pop in. Um, but, uh, I have stuff up on my website as well. So aliseely.com. I really, oh, I try to remember to update my website, but there is a tour tab. Uh, I need to update it, but there is like, if I'm going out of town, I usually post that. I don't always post things that are in town in Nashville just because I pretty much play almost every day. It seems like, so that would be a bit tough to constantly be updating the website on that kind of stuff. So I just post them like on Facebook or Instagram. Um, but yeah, my YouTube channel, I could use some love on my YouTube channel so I can keep putting out music videos. Cause that's kind of like one of my biggest wants and uh, hopes for this year will be to put out some videos. Okay. Uh, where's the fathers you ever played um, outside of uh, Nashville? The furthest? <laughs> oh, man. Well, I probably, I, I, I would say there was a time when I played in California, and then I played in New York in the same month. And so it was like coast to coast, you know? And that was kind of cool. I called it like a coast to coast kickoff, um, which was really cool, and I had a lot of fun. If you're ever in New York, you have to go to this place called Dumpling Man. Um, have you ever been there? Oh, no. <laughs> oh my gosh it is so okay just remember i told you that if you ever go dumpling man is the best it's like they make these dumplings right in front of you and they're they're amazing and they're warm and they're delicious <laughs> <laughs> i love food so I'll, don't get me started that's one thing okay. i have inside joke with some of the people down at cat country 103 at back home in california because we were getting out of a concert and I was parked by KFC, and I was like, oh, we better get some mac and cheese. <laughs> you know, so anyway, ever since then, they never let me live that down. Okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for uh, being on the show tonight. I really enjoyed having you. Oh, it's been nice hanging out. I see some pictures that are pretty awesome in your background. Yeah. I see, like, Taylor Swift and I think Cheryl Crow. 
Yeah. Um, and we got who? Gwen Stefani. We got Gaga up there. <laughs> Some of my favorite idols are on the background right here. Got um, okay. Van Halen. And... Van Halen up there. <laughs> yeah, rock it out. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Motley Crue up top, if you can see that. Yeah, that's what's getting a little blurry. So you can't really see. But that's awesome. Love it. 